Earlier this month, NASA announced that the risk of asteroid 2024 YR4 hitting the Earth has doubled, now sitting at 2.3%. So is that something to be concerned about or still considered a relatively low, low number? Joining me now to talk about all of this is Dr. Kelly Fast, NASA Acting Planetary Defense Officer. Kelly, thank you for joining me today. Thank you. So let's dive in. Tell me how long you've been tracking asteroid 2024 YR4. Well, this asteroid was first observed and reported in December of this last year. And by the end of the month, it had, uh, there was enough information known about it uh, for it to appear on the risk list at a level where, okay, we need to keep an extra eye on this. And when is its closest approach to Earth supposed to be? Well, for this time around, it already made its closest approach but it will also swing around again in 2028 and then very close in 2032. And it's in 2032 that we really want to understand, you know, where it could go at that time in case it could impact. And, and that's still several years out. So right now you put the risk at 2.3%. 2 Is that considered a high percentage when we talk about near Earth objects? It's still a very low percentage. I mean, 2% 2, 2 means, you know, 98% chance that uh, the asteroid would just pass by the Earth harmlessly. But it is at a level that doesn't happen often at all for um, asteroids of this size. You know, not something that's very large, but large enough that could potentially do damage. And so even though this is a very low impact probability, uh, this is kind of rare. And so we still want to keep an eye on it and to better understand uh, where it could be in the future so that we could either know for certain you know, what that impact probability is, which might eventually just, and more than likely than not, just drop to zero as we get more information over time. So Dr. Fast, explain to me how you track asteroids. How do you assess a threat and put it at 2% versus 1% versus 0.5%? How do you do that with your team? <laughs> Right, well, there are astronomers like the, um, the telescopes that NASA funds and then also telescopes around the world through the International Asteroid Warning Network, you know, that are always uh, uh, searching for asteroids and tracking them. Uh, it was a NASA funded survey, um, the Atlas survey of the University of Hawaii that first reported this asteroid because its job is to search the skies for things that we haven't found yet. Um, but by uh, measuring its position over time, uh, with NASA funded telescopes and those around the world, uh, it became evident that uh, the orbit in the future could come very close to Earth. The team out at the, uh, NASA JPL's Center for Near Earth Object Studies uh, does that precision orbit determination into the future uh, to look and see if, a, if an object could uh, pose an impact uh, risk to Earth and also in coordination uh, with our international colleagues like at the Euro European Space Agency, you know, checking each other, taking those measurements, calculating orbits, and looking into the future. We know where that astero asteroid is right now, but we wanna watch it long enough so that we can really narrow down where it could be in the future. So now that you know its existence, you're constantly having your eye on it. Let me ask you this next. If you track it for the next couple of years and then that chance of impact increased, are there any tested means of maybe changing its trajectory so that the chance of impact is lower? Right, well, the first order of business, like you said, we're continuing to watch it. And that really is the action to take right now because we do need to gather more information. And it takes time because the asteroid has to move so that the astronomers can continue to take data and that orbit can be refined. But it's a very empowering thing to even be able to do this because you can make that prediction into the future. And if something were to uh, possibly impact the Earth, to be able to make that prediction you know, allows for preparation, but it's also possible to take that information and the circumstances we have and maybe look at, at mission options. Uh, NASA participates in an international collaboration recommended by the UN, the Space Mission Planning Advisory Group, whose role is to collaborate uh, internationally on making recommendations uh, for response options in space. And so all of those uh, pieces of the puzzle are there and get exercised uh, with uh, some of our hypothetical scenarios that we work through. And now we've got a real world situation, but it's still very early on uh, in these stages to just 
need to gather more information in order to make those uh, informed decisions about the future. And in that international community of fellow astronomers, I mean, you look at those potential solutions. If something were to come on the radar, that's a much higher risk. Can you talk to me about the DART mission from a couple of years ago, one of those tests that you run, you ran to, to try to change the, the pathway of, of an asteroid just the tiniest bit? Right, well, it's, uh, uh, it's one thing to uh, have some ideas for how to deflect an asteroid in space. It's another to actually be able to test it. And so this was a very uh, 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 you know, successful opportunity to actually take what you, know, you might be able to infer from physics and uh, actually do it in real life. And so with DART, it was testing kind of the simplest way that you could deflect an asteroid which would be, uh, it's called the kinetic impactor technique, which really means just hitting the asteroid in order to change its speed and to change its orbit. And so that was tested uh, with, with DART. And so we do have the technique, the kinetic impactor technique, uh, and lots of information about uh, how that could be utilized. And that's just one deflection technique. And so it's, uh, it's one of the capabilities. And so with that success, we actually have some you know, some real data and real options uh, uh, to look at. But as we always say, including with our hypothetical scenarios and, and even in this situation, it all depends on the asteroid as to what the response could be. What are you doing in the future to speed up this process of discovering near-Earth objects? Mm -hmm. Well, NASA is also developing the Near-Earth Object Surveyor, which is a space telescope that will operate in the infrared, looking at infrared light and working in concert with the telescopes on the ground will actually speed up the discovery of the asteroids that we have yet to find, which will again give us that years or decades notice of whether or not there might be something that, that we should be looking at more closely in the future. So what can you tell me kind of to summarize? You've discovered this asteroid, you're watching it. What do people need to know? Right, well, I've been asked, you know, should people lose sleep at night over this? No, absolutely not. In fact, it should be uh, very comforting to know that, you know, for years there have been teams of astronomers, you know, funded by NASA and then also through our colleagues around the world and the International Asteroid Warning Network, you know, watching the skies. And so it's actually a really good thing, you know, that we know about this and to have that advanced information. And so this team, you know, at NASA and around the world is going to continue to track 2024 YR4, gather the best information available. And then as uh, as the months go on, we'll know more about what, uh, if anything, you know, should be done next. And so that's actually an empowering thing to have information in the future uh, about the future, um, uh, which is something that, you know, uh, didn't, didn't exist, uh, you know, many, many years ago. But uh, like with other, uh, like with what you deal with every day with weather, you've got satellites being able to give you and models to give you predictions so that you can actually tell people uh, uh, what might happen. That's kind of what we're working with uh, in planetary defense in a, a in a, a much rarer situation. But yes. it's empowering to even be able to do that. And so people should rest assured. We don't put 2% chances of rain on the seven day forecast. So 2%, yeah, right. <laughs> as you mentioned, it is something not to worry about, not to panic about, but also comforting to know that you all have been tracking this asteroid and are watching it closely, not just with NASA, but other uh, agencies around the world as well. Dr. Kelly Fass with NASA, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.